Seeing the future direction of the entire economy is hard. Get 10 economists together, you get 10 different answers. I have, however, had a bias this year, as you know if you've been listening to me, toward thinking that the recovery that we were having was going to be tepid at best, and I argued as early as three months ago that it may already have been ending. I'm a pessimist on our economy. Here's why. The Obama administration's sole tool for improving the economy has been stimulus. But they can't do any more stimulus because they blew the deficit up with the last one that failed. They don't believe in tax cuts, so they won't do that. So what else is there? I've had some people argue that Reagan's economy didn't recover until two years into the Reagan presidency. And that therefore you shouldn't expect the Obama economy to recover until two years into his presidency. False analogy. Here's why. Reagan radically cut taxes during his first two years. It took that two years for those tax cuts to get into the economy. Remember, when you cut taxes, the impact is not felt immediately. Let's suppose somebody's tax rate is 30% and it's cut to 18%. All right, he gets some extra money on his first paycheck, but the cumulative effect of that saving the 12% each paycheck and each paycheck and each paycheck, it takes time for that person to realize he's got more money. You don't immediately start spending because you got an extra $47 in your take-home pay. It takes a while. The impact of tax cuts is usually 6 to 18 months. Likewise, the impact of tax increases is the same thing. But Reagan cut taxes. Obama hasn't cut taxes. Taxes at the end of this year are going to increase with the expiration of the Bush tax cuts. It's going to be the opposite. My fear is that next year will be worse than this year. Even if you believe in stimulus, which I don't, he can't go and do it again because he's tapped out. So whatever positive effects the stimulus ha had, and I argue that there weren't any, but even if you claim they are, they're going to be gone. In the meantime, there's going to be a tax increase. And even with this mild recovery that we had, it never, ever produced more jobs. The unemployment rate moved from like 10 to 9.7, and the unemployment rate is actually up if you consider private sector jobs. Get rid of just the census. No new jobs are being created. Plus, as you know, I argue that a gov the creation of a jo government job is bad for the economy rather than good because it requires the entire private sector to support that job. It's private sector job growth that determines whether or not an economy is expanding because private sector expands when people are buying products, doing business. Government expands merely when some government official creates a job. A private business expands because whatever they are doing is doing well enough that they need to hire more people to handle their work. And when they hire more people, that means that person has a job and spends money on some other company and product, and that company now expands. That's how economies grow. You can't have a recovery without an improvement in unemployment. And while unemployment's the last thing to recover, it isn't recovering at all. The stock market is the best predictor we have of the economy. And the stock market, people always say, well, the stock market's going up, but the economy's still bad. The stock market's always ahead of the game. The decline in the stock, the last decline of the stock market foretold how bad the economic collapse is going to be. The stock market fell apart in 2008. The economy fell apart in 2009. The stock market rallied in 2009, foreshadowing this improvement that we saw in the economy. But is it already over? The stock market's had a miserable seven weeks now. My fear is that it's already over. This is it. What's unemployment going to go to if we go down again? 11? 12? Have you ever seen a president screw up as much stuff as this guy has screwed up in a year and a half? He blew the deficit through the roof and didn't create a job, a, a private sector job in the process. He made the terrible mistake of blowing the stimulus on government jobs and social service jobs because he never understood that it is private sector jobs that create economic growth and where the taxes to support the government has to come from. There are certainly some businesses that are doing well right now, but many are not. Quoting from the report, uh, this one is from Bloomberg. 
Confidence among U.S. and U.S. consumers sank in June more than forecast as Americans became distressed over the outlook for jobs and incomes. Stocks plunged as the confidence data combined with the conference board figures showing China's economic outlook improved less than previously estimated, adding to concern the global economy is slowing. Unemployment and the turmoil in financial markets precipitated by the European debt crisis raised the risk that household spending will falter. If China's slowing down... And Europe's broke because nobody can get any credit. Where's the growth in America going to come from? We don't have any growth here. Our president is raising our taxes, putting new mandates on business, creating idiotic programs like nationalized health care. His only response to the whole thing is, since I can't find any jobs, we're going to extend unemployment benefits even longer. I don't like to make general predictions on the stock market. I haven't proven to be much better than anybody else about it. But I would be very concerned that the market's going to be lower at the end of the year than it is right now, and that it is telling us... The recovery we have seen is done. I did a segment when I was on Rush's program, and I did the same type of segment here before I did Rush, about the impact of the expiration of the Bush tax cuts and how no one is talking about this. But high-income individuals know it's coming. They're not spending money. Businesses know they're coming. They also are terrified of hiring people because it's one more person they're going to be saddled with with the health care mandate. And every business expects their health insurance costs to explode as a result of Obamacare and all the new mandates of things that have to be covered. AT&T and many other corporations are already taking charges on their financial statements. In other words, setting aside money, committing money as a future obligation because of the expense they see coming with Obamacare. If you think each new employee is going to increase that expense, why would you hire anybody right now? I don't try to be Mr. Doom and Gloom on the economy, and I was someone who did predict we would have a recovery in 09 after the big rally in the stock market. But my fear is that the rally, such as it was, and the improvement in the economy, was the weak little thing that we've already seen, and that it's over. That's my fear. And what's the president's case to claim? By the way, Obama and, in the wake of this, Obama and Bernanke came out today and claimed the economy was strengthening. Let me read this. This is associated with President Barack Obama with Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke at his side insisted the U.S. economy was strengthening Tuesday despite foreboding data and a fresh stock market slump. He sounds like Herbert Hoover. Good time prosperity is right around the corner. The economy is strengthening. We are into recovery, Obama said. Shortly after, new figures showed that consumer confidence, a key economic indicator, had tumbled in June, sending stock markets worldwide plummeting. Obama attributed some of the market tumult to listen to headwinds and some skittishness and nervousness. Oh, thank you. Skittishness and nervousness. That's what we're feeling out there. Because of worries over the European debt crisis, which he said had overshadowed positive trends in other sectors. President then said, we have gone from losing 750,000 jobs per month to five months of job growth now. Private sector job growth that is obviously so important to consumer confidence and the well-being of the economy overall. I don't know what numbers he's looking at. There's no private sector job growth. It stopped last month. Almost every job that's been created has been government jobs, and most of that is the census. If you're going to count the census as a positive, imagine when the census ends and all of those then can be counted as numbers in jobs lost. What's the optimistic case out there? I, it's hard to see it. Particularly when you understand that Europe is bust, they're having to rein everything in. If China slows down, that's terrifying. China buying stuff from everybody, and India buying just the Bucyrus deal we've been talking about. China and India buying stuff from everybody is one of the few things that's kept the global economy moving. The lefties out there, what's the cause for optimism? You've already done stimulus, boy, that worked. We're going to raise taxes, that's going to help. We're going to have nationalized health care that has employers terrified of hiring anyone? What is the case for the optimism? I'm merely one guy in the economy myself. And yeah, I got a good job and I got a contract and all that stuff. But I'll tell you, this is not the time that I'm particularly interested in investing in anything. Other than very defensive things like precious metals. Consumer confidence, which had been going up, is now down again. Unemployment hasn't moved. This now, He can cite whatever number he wants. We're still at 9.7%, and the only job growth is when he adds to the federal debt by creating government jobs. I haven't even mentioned what's happening with the witching hour of all of these states being forced to cut back because they're all running massive deficits themselves, and some of them are going to try to tax their way out of it. Well, you're all gloomy and doomy. I'm just calling it as I see it.
And furthermore, the stock market, people investing with their own money, appear to be agreeing with me. The last seven weeks on the stock market have been atrocious. I don't know the actual numbers. I don't have them in front of me. I, off the top of my head, the S&P has to be down about 11 or 12%. I, maybe I'm a little high on that. Just seven weeks, maybe I'm way high. I admit I didn't look it up. I could tell you that every mutual fund that I'm in is a lot lower now than it was in April.